This is a different crowd. They're all African American men. Miles, start by taking a patient. Powell, start by asking questions. If anything stands out, I know where to find you. Natalie? I'll start with an antibiotic push. And check all their cultures for gram positive bacilli. Eva, tell NIH the amount of anthrax vaccine needed just doubled. Dr. Connor? Ian, this is Dr. Connor. It is my pleasure to meet you. Well, the pleasure is mine. How long have you had this? In just a few days. Does it hurt to touch? I don't feel anything. Any idea what may have caused this? Well, I have seen spider bites like this many times in Nigeria. It's going to heal okay, am I right? Well, I'm sure you're going to be fine. Right now, I need to know everything that you've done. You know, who you've seen, where you've been, what you may have touched. What do you do for a living? I am a college student, a junior. Where do you work? Where do I work? Uh, for a job. Do you work on campus, off campus? What are you going to do with that? This will help us confirm that the patients here at the hospital have the same symptoms that you do. Dr. Durant? Are you saying there are more sick people than those I have come in with? Yeah, I'm afraid so. Any excuses just for a second? A cutaneous lesion. He came in direct contact with the anthrax. I don't think he even knows he's been exposed, but he might help us find the source. I'll start with his culture first. Good. Miles, take his chest x-rays. I want to know exactly how much contact he's had with anthrax. Okay. Hi, could I use your fax machine? It's fine. Thanks. You're with NIH? Uh-huh. That's cool. Do you know that gentleman? No, I've never seen him before. For a dollar. Get what you want. It's on me. <laughs> you must not be from around here. Sure am. I was born and bred in the city of brotherly love. Well, I love it. You could teach a few men I know a thing or two. I'll, uh, I'll take the granola bar. Watching your weight? No. Should I? I'll change the thing. Thanks. So, uh, are you here visiting a patient? Yeah. You? Uh, just in for a physical. How'd it go? My physical? <laughs> yes. Went well. How was your visit? Good. Very good. I got what I needed. Okay. Let's cut the crap. Who do you work for? Philadelphia Chronicle. You must be Eva Rossi. You look shorter in person. I read your bio on the NIH website. Oh, a reporter who does his homework. What a new twist. So, why don't you tell me what you know? Oh, so you can deny it? No problem. Three people are dead of anthrax. The citizens of Philadelphia should be the first to know there's bioterrorism running rampant in their city. The citizens? Or just your readers? Well, that'll be a win-win. Tell me who your misinformed source is before they make our investigation any more difficult, and I'll give you an exclusive on the real story. I'm not revealing my sources to NIH or anyone else. The fallout of publishing this story too early will risk the lives of the same people you're trying to inform. Too early? A curious choice of words. Don't get in my way, Mr. Hodge. Stephen, we have a problem. Someone's been talking to the press. Someone? A reporter from the Philadelphia Chronicle has the story. My best bet is that bioterrorism hits Philadelphia is going to be the top story in the late edition. Which means you only have a few hours to do damage control. <laughs> Natalie, have you been able to identify the strain of anthrax? The good news is none of the patients have the strain used in the bioterrorist attacks of 2001. The AIM strain. Right. However, the strain I did identify resembles Mohs 1, an African isolate found in Mozambique that usually comes from farm animals or animal products. Animal products. Wool, leather, fur. Wait a minute. Africa? One of them is from there. Ian Adulti. Right. What have you got from his culture? I confirmed his wound is due to cutaneous anthrax exposure. Which means he was infected through a cut or incision. I also ran an x-ray on him. 
He shows signs of mediastinal widening in his chest. Just like the first three patients. So why do Ian and these new patients have in common with Sarah Doyle and the others? How are they connected? I'll talk to her fiancé. You know, in cities like Philadelphia, people may not cross over that invisible line that separates them, but bacterial agents do. We have to find out how. Everything I know, Dr. Connor. Are you sure about that? Yes, I am sure. We haven't told you everything. Ian, you've been exposed to anthrax in two different ways, cutaneous and inhalational. We've already started medicating you, and we're doing everything that we can. But we still need to know how you came in contact with anthrax. But I don't know. Have you recently come in contact with imported wool items, leather, animal products? Such as meat? Yes. My hands work with meat. You're a butcher. Yes, with my friends. We work part-time. We sell meat from a shop. Where exactly is that shop? In the Nigerian community. The shop owner's name is Mr. Ndulu. Please, what have I done wrong? I can fix it. You haven't done anything wrong, Mr. Ndulu. One of your employees, Ian Adote, is very sick. We think the source of that sickness came from right here inside this market. In my establishment? Not possible. I've been here for 20 years. Mr. Dulo, we're going to need to test your meat and send it to our lab. But uh, if I have a family to feed, employees, what are my customers going to think of me? We're going to do everything we can to make this as easy as possible. Mr. Dulo, this one. What are they, why are you doing this to me? Miles was right. I'm going vegetarian. If Ian cut his hand on this machine, then came in contact with contaminated meat, that's how it may have entered. Through a crack in the skin. But that doesn't explain his inhalational exposure. Maybe the meat aerosolized. Oh. Through the cutting process, particles of aerosolized meat may have traveled through the ventilation system to the front where the customers were. No, that's not likely. And it's not likely Sarah Doyle will want meat from a butcher 30 miles from my house. McCabe, ask Sarah's fiance if she ever bought meat at Ndulu's Quality Meats. What part of town is it in? North Philly. Well, then the answer is no. Miles, just ask. Dr. Connor, I already have. I talked to him about where Sarah works, where she shops, where she spends her time. He told me she doesn't cross that. Invisible line we talked about. How's she doing? Treatment's kicking in. Her lungs are clearing, breathing is stabilizing. And the others? The same. Keep me posted. Wow! We're here to help. Hold on, hold on. Relax, hey, relax. Hey, hey, hey. Why are you running? You're sweating. How long have you been like this? It's been a Shh. Quiet, please. Solid. His lungs have consolidated. He's been exposed. Let's get him to a hospital as soon as we can. Eva. Hey. Well, Stephen wants you to start working on broadening the search for other patients. I'll do it as soon as I finish the press conference. I'm on my way there now. Since the anthrax isn't a threat, why is the press conference still a priority? Because Randall Hodge is going to run with a bioterror angle for the sake of a sexy headline. And the potential public hysteria caused by an erroneous leak from a sleazy source is only going to make our jobs more difficult. Given how? We're taking every prudent measure to protect the city. That's why the CRI, the City's Readiness Initiative, is prepared to deploy antibiotics if necessary. I'll be able to answer your questions in more detail as soon as our investigation is complete. In the meantime, there's absolutely no reason to create fear. The people of Philadelphia should go about their daily lives as usual. I have time for one last question? Yes, yes sir. Ms. Rossi, regardless of your opening statement, my source states that, in fact, this is bioterrorism. Now, whether it's naturally acquired anthrax or weapons grade, three people have died. 
And as far as their families are concerned, they've been terrorized. What's your response to that? Mr. Hodge, your source is wrong. This is not bioterror. If it were, you all would have been medically screened before coming on the premises. If this were a biological attack, a high-level suit and glasses type from Homeland Security would be addressing you, not me. Our team is in control and doing its very best to come to a resolution. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Russell, Mr. Russell, Mr. Russell. McCabe. A guy named Wally Tundi who works with Ian at the butcher shop is on his way to the hospital. Is he another anthrax case? Yeah, I believe so, but he doesn't speak English. Get Ian to help us. How long have you been in the States? Eight months and four days. Did you arrive alone? My brother was supposed to join me. He got cold feet. And stayed in Nigeria. I have not heard from him. How long have you been a meatpacker? That is only my job. I am not a meatpacker. You're right. How long have you worked at Indulus? Four weeks. The work is hard, but when I am well enough, I will return. What are you doing? Giving you more oxygen and medication. Help you breathing. I should have known that. We went over it in physiology class. Mm, Pre-med? I've wanted to be a doctor ever since I can remember. No sleep, no friends, no dating. Ever. You ready for that? Yes. All those things. <laughs> Wally? That is my friend. What is he doing here? Your friend's very ill, Ian. Unless we can talk to him. We can't help him. We need your help. Me? What can I do? You can talk for us. Think of him as your first patient. Whatever you need of me. We need to know if someone was taking care of him before he became sick. Does Wally Tunde have a doctor? I only gave Mr. Tunde medication for his condition. That is all. Wally is very sick, Dr. Luke. He inhaled the anthrax bacterium into his lungs, possibly damaging his alveoli. You know as well as I do that leads to respiratory arrest, even death. He's telling you the truth. We need your help so that others don't follow. What is it you want to know? Have you had any patients with anthrax symptoms? If so, did they talk about how they may have been contaminated? Did you hear me, doctor? I will need certain assurances. Assurances? I need to know that you will not contact immigration. We're here for answers, doctor. We're not interested in deporting anybody. Do I have your word? You have my word. And yours? You do. Come. Take good care of them. 